Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending upon where you are in the world, and welcome to today's webinar. Embrace AIoT, Artificial Intelligence, Internet of Things, and Accelerate to the Future. Brought to you by Tech Online, IEI Technology USA Corp., Arrow, and broadcast by Aspen Core. I'm Chris Keach, and I'll be your moderator today. We have just a few brief announcements before we begin. First, the slides will advance automatically throughout the event. You may also download a copy of the slides by clicking on the green folder icon located at the bottom of your screen. You can participate in our Q&A session by asking questions at any time during this webinar. Just type your question into the Q&A text area located to the right of the presentation window and then click the Submit button. Please note that we'll try to get to as many questions as we can in the time that we have left at the end of today's program. However, if we're not able to get to your individual question today, someone will get back to you after the program is over. Also at this time, we recommend that you disable your computer's pop-up blockers. This will allow the slides to advance automatically throughout the event. And at the end of the webinar, we will ask you to complete our feedback form. Your feedback will provide us with valuable information on how we can improve future events. You can also launch the survey at any time by clicking on the red survey button at the bottom of your console. And if you're experiencing any technical problems, please type your issue into the Q&A text area, and we will be glad to offer one-on-one -on -one assistance. And now, on to the presentation. Embrace AIoT, Artificial Intelligence, Internet of Things, and Accelerate to the Future. Discussing today's topic is Patrick Sung, VP of Sales and Marketing, IEI Technology, USA Corp. Patrick Sung is the Vice President of Sales and Marketing at IEI Technology, USA Corp. His team is responsible for driving enterprise demand and increasing sales in North America. Patrick has over 10 years of professional IPC and system integration experience, as well as OEM, ODM customer support for different vertical market applications. It's with great pleasure I now turn this special session over to Patrick to begin. Patrick, take it away. Great, thank you. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Patrick. Uh, today I'll be going over some of uh, the uh, artificial intelligence uh, deep learning, training, and, and, and inference in a, in, a, in a nutshell, and we'll also kind of introduce Intel's latest OpenVINO toolkit, um, and then going over our uh, hardware solution on the AI inference systems, and the acceleration card that we co-work with Intel, and some of the application that we have already done um, to the uh, AI space. Okay, so for AI learning, training, and inference, so this is an overview of how we kind of progressed in the past six years. Uh, starting in 2010, everybody's just going going crazy over, over like cl cloud computing. You know, we, ha we have the uh, Google uh, Cloud, uh, Azure from Microsoft, and the uh, <clears throat> uh, Amazon uh, cloud service. So, but in, two, in just two short years, there's a big data uh, collection that uh, everybody's talking about how we could uh, make money uh, out of it. Uh, but in 2016, uh, AI started to to launch. So, combining these three together, uh, some of the stuff that you probably have experienced. Uh, one time, I went to a Nike store, uh, but I didn't buy anything. But after that, I start browsing my uh, browser on my cell phone. It starts popping up Nike's uh, advertisement. So it's a pretty uh, astounding uh, experience that we have that uh, uh, AI has been uh, affecting our daily life right now. So that's a very, very fast progress over the past six years. So with that, we have, uh, we want to talk about some of the artificial intelligence uh, in a nutshell. So AI is actually an overview of uh, any any kind of computing uh, uh, power or computing uh, behavior that kind of mim mimics uh, human behavior. And machine learning is a subcategory under artificial intelligence. And then there's a deep learning. Uh, within deep learning, we, we, we have the uh, CNN, which is the convolutional neural network. This is something we wanted to kind of Go, go into and what, what type of uh, solution or hardware solution and software solution we could uh, provide. Uh, basically, these are the, the CNN is a deep learning topology that's effective on 
image image class, uh, classification like facial recognitions, uh, telling you know, if it, uh, this image is a dog or cat or you know uh, people counting and also other t type of uh, uh, production imaging uh, put, uh, corrections. So and for the for the training inference, this is a, a quick uh, overview on how you, you do the trainings. So basically, uh, in a CNN topology, the you give them a bunch of pictures. Um, like for example, on the dog pictures, you provide them uh, as many as you can, like 20,000 or 30,000 different type of dog pictures. And it will learn by uh, seeing those images and kind of tell you if it's a dog or a wolf or a cat. So, and how the, how this topology works, uh, nobody really knows, but the process is just, you know, you store in the uh, photos, then it will start by uh, learning what type of uh, uh, image it is. So with that in mind, let's go into the next one. So there's a, a few common framework and tools that you can use. Um, on the framework, the most popular one that we, we, uh, we have encountered is the TensorFlow, which is backed by Google, and also MXNet, uh, backed by Microsoft and Intel and various, various other institutions. So these are uh, the framework, framework you use to kind of train the models, uh, sending the pictures. So the picture, uh, Arrow and IEI could, could uh, provide a service by uh, training your AI models. So we could hire like interns or college grad to <laughs> label those pictures, uh, like uh, you know a dog or a cat, and feeding these uh, training model into these uh, either TensorFlow or MXNet uh, without programmers. Then you, you you will have a basic uh, uh, model that you want to do. Um, so that's how they, they do that. Okay, and then so as far as hardware wise, we have uh, divided into uh, four sections. So on the influence side, which, which is on the edge, and so edge computing is something like uh, it's very close to the uh, image image uh, area. For example, like an autonomous car. So this computer will be located inside the car to kind of tell your uh, driving uh, behavior or you know do a, autonomous autonomous driving. So you, we got most of the power from Intel and Nvidia. Um, for the training side, we uh, pretty much it's dominated by Intel and NVIDIA here. So, so basically, uh, what we, we try to promote is the uh, Intel has a probably end-to-end uh, -end solution from the training side all the way to the cloud and to the edge. Okay. Okay, now let's go into Intel OpenVINO Toolkit. So Intel is it's actually a 50% uh, software company now. Uh, they provide this uh, OpenVINO toolkit. It's short for Vision Inference Neural Network Open Source. So, uh, optimization, sorry. <laughs> so, in the uh, video encoding process, uh, for example, you, on this application, you want to kind of detect people counting in a public space. So, it's kind of still not <laughs> legal here, but uh, in Asia, they do. They do that in some public places, or, or do some facial recognition. So you get your video capture encoding and video process. And for the Open Reno, uh toolkit, it actually optimize the process. Uh, so basically, it will increase the recognition speed uh, 20 times uh, compared to uh, not optimized image. So in a live act uh, video like this, it could uh, it could do it the uh, facial recognition uh, 20 times faster than your typical uh, CPU process. So this is an optimization tool after you train your um, artificial intelligence model. Okay. So again, on the uh, OpenVINO toolkit samples, uh, there's actually a pre-trained model you could download from Intel software website. Like for example, you, there's a a model you could tell the age and gender of a face of a of, uh, of a life uh, uh, facial uh, people, and then there's a security barrier that you could uh, s 
set on a security camera. So if somebody go into that barrier, it will start allow, uh, start the uh, alarm. Uh, so there's a bunch of uh, uh, trained models that you could actually download from the website. Okay. So now let's move into IEI's uh, AI inference systems. So this is actually uh, our uh, ruggedized fanless unit that is designed for harsh uh, environment. So it could withstand negative 20 to 60 degrees Celsius in operating temp. So, so it's perfect for uh, like a outdoor type of uh, application or in a, a harsh you know, factory environment. And this runs uh, fanless on either Intel 6 or 7th gen uh, core i5, i7 processor. And it has a couple expansion slots for uh, AI acceleration card. Okay. So Intel actually picked this unit uh, to be a software development kit. So this will be pre-installed with all the MXNet, uh, TensorFlow, and the uh, OpenVINO uh, installed into this unit. So you can just open the box up, uh, start running, uh, training your AI models. Okay. Yeah, so this is an overview of what, what we could do here. So it's pre-installed with the Cafe MXNet into all the uh, storage space here, and, and you can start running your development kit. So, so this kit is actually not for end user, it's for developers to de develop your um, AI applications. Another one is the only one we call it the AI Plus Storage. So this is actually a, a more powerful uh, Xeon W processor with lots of storage and lots of uh, expansion for either GPU or your FPGA uh, AI solution card. Okay. So this is a kind of overview of what we have here. On the right side, we have a storage zone. <laughs> we have uh, f 56 slots for hard drive storage. And on the left side here, we have eight slots, and four of them will be uh, PCI Gen 3 by, by eight. Okay. So pretty much this is a, a AI storage system on wheels. Yeah, so it's the size of a small refrigerator. Okay. And let's go over the storage card. So the uh, we have three acceleration card. One of one of them is based on CPU, and center one is accelerator by F, Intel's uh, FPGA, and the right side is accelerator by VPU, which stands for Vision Process Unit. Okay. So let's go into a little introduction for the FPGA here. So the FPGA processor is a uh, that's actually as fast as a pretty high-end NVIDIA graphic card, but it runs on a very low power, almost less than 60, 50 to 60 watts. So this is actually perfect for uh, to kind of kind of conserve the energy on the uh, big data centers. So typical uh, high-end graphic card will have 150 watts to 200 watts, so you're saving almost 70% power, but at the same time, you still have the you know as fast uh, of the processing power that that you have. Uh, so, so the reason we use the assertion card on the AI uh, inference process is because um, on a very large image data, uh, for example, you want if you want to run a, a bunch of movies that you want to find uh, with a Tom Cruise face or whatever that, that he he spoke, so we can pull some section of the quote from from those movies and put it on your YouTube channel, uh, you will be using this uh, card to kind of accelerate all, the, all this process. Okay. Okay. So the next one is actually the, uh, the VPU. It's based on Intel's Movidius Myria X chips. Uh, we call it the MX8. It's because uh, it's Myria um, X chip with eight, eight of them 
built in into one one core. Okay, so this is uh, based on ASIC technology, so it runs uh, even cooler, less than 30 watts. And here's a quick comparison between those uh, uh, FPGA and um, VPUs. So it supports a, a lot of topology here, but for the FPGA, it supports even more. Okay. Um, and on the floating point, FPGA will, will support uh, nine. So in this case, the, the lower the better. So and then flexibility, uh, since the VPU is ASIC, it's pretty much fixed. But for FPGA, we have uh, quarterly BSP update to improve the process. Okay, again, the, the, the power consumption, 30 versus 50 watts. Okay. So these are a solution card. And now I want to go over some of the application that we have done for for the AI car and uh, development kit. So basically, all these six vertical markets will be uh, using the AI uh, hardware platform and software. So like uh, healthcare, security, factory automation, retail space, <laughs> like the Nike store, and robot for the uh, autonomous driving in the factories, okay, and biomedical, okay. Um, so on the factory side, uh, again, this is uh, we can use it for mission vision. So uh, some of the application we have done is we uh, developed a training model for the uh, fruit factory. So it could tell the fruit uh, it's an orange or apple, and can, and also the size of the fruit. So in a sorting factory, they can sort it into like a small. Uh, bag for the small apple, and then bigger bag for and charge higher for the uh, larger apples. So. Okay, and we actually ha has been working uh, pretty extensively on the health healthcare market. So it actually helped the p physician to diagnostic uh, patients uh, faster with using the the image. Okay from the MRI or x-rays or other physical data. Okay. So one of the applications for this one is for the eye um, examinations. So let's move to the next one here. Yeah, so there's one um, uh, issue with the aging population is they, some of them will have the age um, macular degeneration uh, on the inside of the eyeballs. So you have a, a blur, blur uh, vision coming out if you're looking out. <laughs> so it's actually in the back of your eyeball. So we have sent in about 22,000 uh, optical uh, coherence uh, image to the AI model. And we'll have, tra we'll have trained them in, uh, and to recognize if there's a issue with these uh, patients. So, and then we op optimize it by using OpenVINO uh, software and our acceleration card. So uh, by using a CPU, as you can see, it can only run one frame or 1.7 frame per second. Um, after we use the acceleration car and the OpenVINO from Intel, it increased into 28 frames per second. Uh, so this actually saves a lot of time for the physician to examine all the different type of issues. So if they could find out if uh, some patient has issues, they can uh, ask them to come back to do a further examination or uh, some uh, cures for them. Okay. Okay, and another one is for security surveillance. Uh, everybody knows in China they want to <laughs> kind of uh, find out whose behavior on the street is good or bad, and they kind of give them points <laughs> uh, throughout the throughout their their social life. Uh, so 
in the in the big big um, surveillance environment here, we we have uh, facial recognition capability, behavior detection again, <laughs> uh, and some suspicious detections. So the data source is IP camera in this case. And also another one is a security construction field. Um, again, we don't want to uh, have some non-worker to be trespassing in this area. So you could get a uh, warning to the security uh, staff or you know, sound alarm based on the intrusion alert. So finally, a kind of overview is uh, our IEI tank A70 AI is a development kit that you could you could get from uh, Arrow's website. So this will help you do the AI training from ground up. Uh, so again, from the uh, camera side, you can start capturing image to get your model going. Uh, or you can use it as an industrial device to for your factory floor. It could add also um, IoT sensors for other very various applications. Okay, and it also has uh, the flexibility for expanding, uh, adding a different uh, acceleration card into these two slots here. Okay, and again, it's all pre-installed pre -install with uh, all the necessary software, AI software you need to start your development. Okay. So with that, I want to uh, thank you and pass this to uh, Chris with any Q&A. All right, thank you, Patrick, for a great presentation. Uh, just as a reminder, please fill out the feedback form that will open up at the end of the program. To complete the form, please press the Submit Answer button at the bottom of your page. Thank you in advance for filling out the feedback form. Your participation in this survey allows us to better serve you. We're going to now move on to the question and answer portion of our event. As a reminder, to participate in our Q&A session, just type your question into the text box located to the right of the presentation window or click on the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen and then click the Submit button. Please note that we'll try to get to as many of these questions as we can. If we're not able to get to your question today, someone will get back to you after the program is over. So Patrick, we have uh, several questions coming in. And our first question for you, uh, we, we know AI is the trend, but we don't know where to start and how to apply these products in application. Any suggestion or help uh, that we could get from Arrow or IEI? Uh, okay, great. So I, I, like we mentioned before, uh, IEI and Arrow have the software and hardware solution to provide end-to-end -end solutions. So we have the team that could uh, help you train the models. Uh, for example, if you want to uh, do something in your retail store and wanted to kind of get uh, some type of uh, traffic footing or people counting into your store, we can help you train uh, the models and to start your, your um, AI applications. So we can provide end-to-end -end from training for optimization and deployment into into your uh, retail store. All right, thank you, Patrick. We have another question here for you. Uh, why did Intel choose IEI Tank 870 as AI development uh, or as an AI development kit? Right. So the Tank 870 is actually not your typical computer because your typical computer can only uh, work on uh, like a 35 degree Celsius, which is like what 70, 75 uh, degree Fahrenheit environment. So the tank could work in a pretty harsh temperature from like negative 20 all the way to like 60 degrees Celsius. And it also runs fanless. It doesn't have any moving parts, so it's a uh, pretty, pretty uh, durable uh, in terms of uh, the usage. So because a lot of edge uh, computing, they they put their computer in a uh, like very harsh environment, like a, on top of a light pole for surveillance or other crazy uh, environment. And, and finally, because it has a couple PCIe slots, so it's, it has the uh, capability of uh, adding more AI acceleration card to, to this unit. So that's why Intel you know, 
pick that pick our unit for for their edge uh, development. All right, thank you, Patrick. Uh, another question here for you: In one of the applications, you increased the throughput by 20 times using OpenVINO. So, what was performed by OpenVINO to make that increase happen? Oh, that's a pretty great question. So, OpenVINO is actually the optimization uh, software. So, I'm not exactly sure how that did it, but it probably compressed some of the images and kind of speed up the process by using a GPU in, instead of CPU or the uh, uh, our assertion card to increase the speed. All right, thank you, Patrick. Another question here for you says, uh, what was what's the advantage of, over Intel IEI Vision acceleration card versus the say Nvidia graphics? Right. So Nvidia graphic, they are actually graphic card for mostly gamers uh, because they they have a multiple core to do a lot of stuff like Bitcoin mining and other stuff. But but for the Bitcoin mining, uh, they eventually went into uh, ASICs which is kind of dedicated to process that kind of stuff. So same thing with our uh, acceleration car. So our ASIC and FPG car are actually dedicated to process uh, AI image as fast, fast and, uh, as fast as possible and as efficient as possible. So it's also co more cost effective than your high-end NVIDIA car. So there's actually three benefits. You save power, you save money, and it's dedicated to uh, to run your AI application faster. All right, thank you, Patrick. Uh, we have another question here for you, and our next question says, uh, do you have any perspectives for embedded AI? Well, that's kind of a great question. So embedded AI is similar to what you see in the tank uh, A70. It's a sort of embedded unit, but uh, uh, it's a start. It's, it's a starting point. Uh, I know it's kind of big in size, uh, but if you optimize your AI solutions, you can actually uh, put your model into a smaller platform that that uses a uh, Intel uh, Apollo Lake GPU process. Uh, or we have a roadmap for a smaller M.2 uh, Myriad uh, acceleration card. So in a, a smaller footprint, you could put a, a pretty powerful AI solution into the edge. So, but Tank is a, A70 is just a starting point for us. And in the next uh, few months, we'll be introducing a smaller, uh, more of an embedded unit size, you know, in, into the market. All right. Well, thank you, Patrick. That looks like all the questions that we do have for today. I'd like to thank Patrick for a great presentation and Q&A session. And for more information related to today's webinar, please visit any of the resource links available in the green folder icon at the bottom of your screen. Within the next 24 hours, you will receive a personalized follow-up email with details and a link to today's presentation on demand. Once again, we'd like to thank you for attending today's webinar, Embrace AI, excuse me, AIoT, Artificial Intelligence, Internet of Things, and Accelerate to the Future, brought to you by Tech Online, IEI Technology USA Corp., and Arrow. This webinar is copyright 2018 by Aspen Core. The presentation materials are owned by or copyright by Tech Online, IEI Technology USA Corp., and Arrow, and the individual speaker is solely responsible for his content and opinions. On behalf of our guest, IEI Technology uh, USA Corp., and Arrow, I'm Chris Keach. We'd like to thank you for joining us, and we hope you have a great day.